Okay, so with the, the gearbox all together, there's two new two more pieces left to do. It's getting it rat mounted to the router and chucked up in the collet. So we've got our pinion gear pulled out, chucked up in the lathe on the tailstock. I need a little bit of oil there. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to... Well, apparently I'm going to start turning that. <laughs> we're going to turn... Uh, this the shank that doesn't get pressed into the bearing that's what this line is here i'm going to turn this down to about three eighths and then try to thread that so that i can thread on an adapter turn it to half inch so that it'll go in the router collet that's the plan anyway i'm either going to destroy the pinion and have to buy some new ones or it's going to work so let's uh look up a little couple of challenges on this particular turn um I'm turning up to the end of this dark line, this black line here. But I've got to go all the way up into this threaded area too. And it looks like I may hit the chuck in this case. So what I'm, But the ultimate thing is I need some clearance on both sides. I need to f be able to come up right up to shoulders on both sides because I've barely got a grip on it here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn up to this line using this tool and then once I get some clearance, I'll switch out to this tool, which will let me turn up near to the chuck. And between the two of them, I should be able to blend together a, uh, a workable um, diameter that then I can throw a die on and get some threads on it. So we're going to start by seeing how close to that chuck I can get here. And then we'll turn those old threads away. These are some metric threads that came with the came on the pinion, pinion already. Um, so I'm going to try to get as deep here as I can and then just use that carbide brazed. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna smack pretty good there. So what I'm going to try to do here is uh, see if I can't pull it back just a hair. Just to buy myself a little bit of spinning room here. There we go. You just... Get it kind of chucked and spin it while we're tightening the chuck to try to keep it as concentric as possible. Give this a little bit more tailstock pressure. That should be pretty good. All right, so we'll uh, start turning this down to something I can work with. We'll come back. So last time I was in the shop was a couple of days ago. I um, was working on this this pinion bearing or pinion gear, uh, finding a way once it was pressed in place to attach the router to it or attach it to the router into the spindle into the collet. And uh, it started out as a 10 millimeter uh, shaft with some weird threads on it. There were like 10.75 threads, I think it was. <clears throat> and then, um, and I didn't have a die or a tap for that. So I thought, well, let's try for 3 8 because it comes pretty close. And I turned it down to 3 8 ran a die on it, and it turns out this material was harder than my dies. I have really cheap, shitty dies. And so what that basically means is I shredded a 3 8 inch spindle. So then I tiled, turn, turned it down to... Uh, I think I went tried for 5 16 and that didn't do very well either after um, annealing the, the shaft, the shank. The die ran a little bit better, but it was still terrible. And then I started to realize I probably shouldn't be threading this because the threading isn't going to is it is not going to guarantee concentricity unless I thread it on and then turn it. So I'm getting more and more to the point where I'm running out of material. Now we're at eight millimeter. We're very close to it. Actually, it's closer to seven, but um, I'm to the point now where I'm gonna abandon the idea of threading because I'm running out of shank and I think it's as big as I can keep it. 
And so what I figure I'll do is I've got a good, it's over an inch, or it's almost an inch, seven eighths of this shank here. So what I figure I might do is I'll take, I'll leave this as it is right now. So it's a pretty reasonably smooth surface. And then I'll take some of this leftover three quarter inch stock and I'll drill it for this this shank diameter to push push it down into there. I'll leave it three quarters up here and I'll drill and I'll either drill and tap for set screws or I'll drill and pin straight through. I don't necessarily need it to be removable, easily removable, and I feel like pinning it will keep it more balanced at the higher RPMs anyway. And then with that three quarter inch shank the, I'll cut it where I need to and turn that part down to a half inch to go into my half inch collet on the spindle. I think that's going to be my uh, my uh, my solution to this. Uh, yeah, it just turns out turning it and threading it wasn't wasn't working out. And then the more I thought about, it, the less I liked the idea of threading it anyway. So that's what we're going to do today. Is we'll cut some of this down turn it to, or maybe even just leave it this length, turn it to uh, turn, turn and face and then bore for a, a snug fit. Um, it won't be a press fit. It'll get a pin or something through it. At the very least, it'll get a pin or a set screw, um, probably two. Um, so that's what we'll do next. So we'll head on over to the metal lathe and uh, get started. First, we're going to turn down the shank that the bit, the router collet will cover, grab onto, and that gives me a nice machine surface to flip around and put in the chuck so I can drill for this spindle, so I can drill for this diameter, and uh, that'll help, help me to keep it as concentric as possible. And our line is right there, and that's where we stop. And I think we're leaving ourselves about a little over an inch and a half, inch and five eighths for collet grabbing. So they're, we're going to turn this down to about a half inch and then fit it onto the collet, <clears throat> onto the router collet. And then we'll uh, flip it around and drill for the, and cut it off and drill for the, um, for the, uh, for the pin, pinion for this. So here we go. Okay, we've got that to uh, within a thou, either way, up or down on this. So uh, I think that's pretty good and it's a fairly polished surface. So we basically matched it with this diameter of a regular router bit because my collet's a router. So my spindle's a router. So now we've got it beveled nice, or chamfered nice. I'm gonna go grab a half inch collet and slide it on there just to get a feel for uh, how it slips on. And, uh, should work out pretty well. It should just go on there nicely. It does, it slides in, and then when it tightens down on it, we'll, uh, yeah, it's a pretty slip fit here too. So that'll work out perfectly. All right, so we got this turned nice to within a thou. It fits on the router collet beautifully, so we're gonna Next step is to flip it around and grab it by this shank, hopefully nicely and gently, um, so we can uh, face the, well, part off and face the other end. And so we'll uh, flip it around here. I'm going to actually go cut this off on the bandsaw first so that I don't have as much, because parting is less fun than uh, sawing. We'll be right back. All right, so we've just sliced off a little bit here, so you can see that. Um, we're going to face this end and then center drill and drill for the uh, the shank of our pinion here. That's next. So right now we're running about three thou out. So we're going to take care of that here real quick. There's our high spot. Okay, so we're dialed to within... Oh, it's less than half a thou at this point, or less than a thou. It's less than half a thou for sure. It's pretty tight. So that's as concentric as I'm going to be able to get things machine-wise. So, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I took this off. I'm actually 
First thing I want to do is face this end off and get back to some machined stuff here. So we'll uh, pop on our cutter and we'll face this end off and then we'll um, get ready for center drilling at that point. So here we go with the facing. and I blended in the, the uh, slight bit of the extra turn or the extra diameter so this was just a tad longer which is fine um, so now we're ready to uh, center drill here do it's a much it's a snug better fit as well as I was getting expecting to get so I'll take that very nicely very gladly I'll take that right, this might be a little blurry for you and I apologize for that um, we've got the we've got the uh, adapter shank plugged in here and we're gonna try to get a screw or a hole at least not necessarily a screw right around the centerish of this machined area. So um, what I've done is I've chucked it into the, the vise and it's got some V groove in here to, to keep it in plane. <clears throat> and then I marked some Sharpie on the outer edge and I've got my center drill in here just barely skimming the top of the surface. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll run this across and it'll scribe a tiny little line for me. Now you'll see that line right there. And so now, I don't know if you can see that line, but I can see that line. Not sure you'll be able to get any better there. Sorry about that. So there's a line there. And so we'll just basically position ourselves right into the middle of that there line. I'm going to pull it towards me some. And then I'm going to drive in a little here. And we're going to basically just sort of eyeball that. And I'll pull it back to where that line was cut. And I'm going to call that center. And uh, we'll start the drilling. Okay, so we, uh, we drilled and we've now got our drift pin down in through here. Our split, our roll pin, I guess it's called, down inside here. That'll hold this spindle on here to let me hook it up to the router. Um, I'm not sure how strong this is, needs to be or whether this will be strong enough. Um, I think it'll be fine. I have a feeling it's just fine. Um, I kind of want this area to, if things fail, I kind of want this area to be my failure point to sort of save the gears if need be. So my amateur, not an engineer uh, brain says this should be okay. We'll see. We'll find out. Um, so the next steps, we've got these uh, brackets need to get placed on here. So we're going to take those and clamp them together, then transfer punch these holes here. They don't have to be super pre precise. I have a feeling we're going to need to uh, shim uh, some of this, maybe, but we'll see. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just clamp these up. <coughs> Uh, it together and then transfer punch the holes so we can drill and tap for some uh, number 10 Allen head screws, uh, cap head screws. So we'll let me get things clamped up and then I'll come back. <clears throat> okay, so we're all uh, transfer punched here. I don't know if you'll be able to get a good view of it, but there you go. Transfer punched both sides. So we'll uh, take it back over to the drill press, clamp these up in the vise, and uh, drill for some number 10 bolts. All right, they're all drilled. And now we're set to uh, tap. Okay, so we have our 
side brackets mounted now and they uh, they will support the whole mechanism here so our next step is to uh, assemble everything again and I've got a problem <laughs> okay so I put all this together right well I have to get a bearing right here so I have to take this a bit apart shouldn't be too bad take this bit apart press the bearing in, put this back on and then push the pin in so we have a little bit of uh, reconfiguring a bit here and then we'll uh, be ready to mount this to the router so I'll get back to you after that